Hi everybody and welcome to Vodcast 21 for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. Uh, this is a, going to be about non-Mendelian inheritance patterns, which is a big sounding word, uh, but it's really not all that complicated. Um, if you remember uh, Mendel, which is where the, uh, the phrase non-Mendelian or Mendelian comes from, this is from Gregor Mendel's name, um, when in Mendelian genetics, uh, everything was either or. And so in non-Mendelian inheritance patterns, um, a lot of what we're going to be looking at is ways of in which traits are blended. Um, because we know that not everything uh, that's inherited is inherited in that either or type of pattern. Um, we, we know lots of examples such as hair color, skin color, height, so on. Uh, that are more of a blending type of inheritance rather than an either-or type of thing. And we'll see several examples of uh, ways in which that works. Okay, so uh, before we get going here, this is a good point to maybe pause and uh, update your table of contents and the organization in your notebook. And here we go. So first, a, well, we're going to start off with a little definition of what do we mean by patterns of inheritance. Um, patterns of inheritance are it's just a fancy way of saying um, these are just predictable patterns that uh, the traits are inherited uh, that they are passed from parents to offspring um, Gregor Mendel of course uh, described one pattern of inheritance and we call it Mendelian inheritance but it was by no means the only uh, pattern of inheritance that we know about so Mendelian inheritance is one there's something called incomplete dominance uh, there's something called polygenic traits that we'll talk about today uh, and multiple alleles. These are the four that we're going to talk about in tonight's podcast or today's podcast. Um, there's also something called codominance and sex linked genes. Um, I'm sure that in the Simpsons family tree, which you can see uh, shown here, I'm sure all of these are at work uh, and we could probably take some time to uh, analyze this in some depth, but. Uh, not today. We'll do that another time. Actually, probably we won't, but you could. Okay, anyway. Uh, so just to back up and, and real quickly review um, Mendelian traits, right? When Men Mendel studied his pea plants, he uh, specifically chose patterns that varied in this either or pattern, right? Seed color could be yellow or green. The seeds could be round or wrinkled flowers were white or purple, and so on. So there, nothing varied uh, in an in-between manner. Everything varied uh, as an either-or. Okay, so um, if you didn't know anything about Mendelian genetics, you might assume if you take a plant with a purple flower, cross-pollinate it with a white-flowered plant, um, it would be certainly reasonable to expect that the offspring would have light purple flowers just like if you mixed purple and white paint but of course that's not the case that's not what happens what actually happens is all of the flowers if these are start off true breeding all of your offspring uh, are purple now if you cross pollinate or self fertilize that uh, those purple flowers you'll end up with offspring in a predictable three to one pattern three to one ratio rather Okay, and that is uh, the definition of, of Mendelian inheritance. Uh, anytime we have one of, of two alleles which is completely dominant, uh, that is what we call Mendelian inheritance. You have exactly two alleles and exactly two uh, phenotypes. Okay, so we have two phenotypes and Everything in the population is one or the other, nothing in between. Okay, and that's Mendelian inheritance. Now, very similar to Mendelian inheritance is something called incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, we have a pattern of inheritance in which neither of the alleles is completely dominant. Okay, uh, and so what that means is any individual that is heterozygous shows a blending of the dominant and recessive alleles. So you have actually, in this case, three phenotypes. 
So one of the most famous examples of this is a, a, a little flower called the four o'clock. Um, and four o'clock flowers actually come in three colors. Uh, red is the homozygous dominant color and white is the homozygous recessive color. Uh, but it turns out that if you cross pollinate the red flower with the white flower, your offspring are all pink. Now it's called incomplete dominance because of course there's some red coloring here, but it's not completely red. Okay, uh, so that's where we get the term incomplete dominance. Um, it's dominant because again there's a little bit of red in there, but it's not completely dominant the way it would be in uh, in a Mendelian uh, situation. Now interestingly enough, if you think about it, what's going to happen to when I uh, cross-pollinate the pink flower with itself. Well, let me give you a hint that the genotype, uh, the, the genotypic ratio is going to be exactly the same as it is with um, a Mendelian um, inheritance pattern. You're going to see that same 1 to 2 to 1 ratio that we see with Mendelian genetics. The difference is that the phenotype, the phenotypic ratio will also be 1 to 2 to 1. Um, remember, in Mendelian genetics, the, uh, the phenotypic ratio would be 3 to 1, uh, but that's not the case in incomplete dominance. We have three phenotypes, um, and the, the heterozygous is always going to be pink or blending. Okay, so that's incomplete dominance. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is something called polygenic traits, and I'm going to give you a little analogy. Um, Imagine that I didn't have a dimmer switch, but I wanted to vary the amount of light in a room just by turning lights, light bulbs on and off. Well, I could very easily do that uh, if I had enough light bulbs. So with, with no light bulbs on, I have a very dark room. Uh, with one, it's a little bit lighter. Two, it's a little bit lighter. Um, and as I turn individual light bulbs on, my room gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Um, now, I haven't used a dim dimmer switch, um, so I in effect have only two alleles uh, for each of these. Uh, if you think of each of these as being a gene, so a total of 10 genes, um, it, the light, it's either an on light bulb or an off light bulb. But the effect is um, each of these uh, genes, which is inherited independently, could be either on or off. So if I am lucky enough to be born, well, assume it's lucky, but it, it might not be. If I'm born with all 10 of those genes turned on, whatever that trait is, I'm going to going to have uh, be at one extreme of, of the population. Uh, the other extreme would be to have none of them turned on, okay, whatever that, that might be. And we'll see some examples. Uh, one of the, probably one of the best examples, well, oh, we'll see that in just a minute. Uh, we have, in this case, 10 genes contributing to the phenotype, so more than one. Each individual gene is either on or off. And the phenotype is determined by the total number of genes that are turned on. Okay. So an example of this is height. Okay. So individuals uh, can vary in height. And of course, you can just look around at your classmates and you can see that uh, we are humans are not like pea plants. Uh, it's not a situation where you're either uh, short and scruffy or tall and gangly. There's everything in, in between. Um, um, and so that's kind of demonstrated here uh, by these individuals. So these are all females, all probably about the same age. I would guess probably either high school or college students. Um, and they lined up by their height with the shortest individuals down at this end, the tallest individuals down at this end. Uh, and so these are all folks that are, are all um, of the same height. And so what you see is a distribution uh, that has this characteristic bell-shaped curve, right? Um, that we, we see this, um, this bell-shaped curve. So this is very different from Mendel's uh, either-or pattern uh, that he would see with, with a Mendelian trait. Okay, so again, polygenic trait is one that's controlled by two or more genes. 
uh, it gives us a wide range of phenotypes. It's not just an either or. Uh, it's an, uh, a range of extremes with everything in between. Okay, so um, again, to, to kind of relate this back to our earlier analogy, uh, these would be people who would have a lower number of uh, whatever the height controlling genes are. Um, these people would be somewhere in the middle, uh, and these people would have a high number of, uh, of those particular genes turned on. Okay, another example of this is skin color. Um, of course, you look around at people and you see that we're not all one or the other. Uh, there is a whole range of different skin colors, um, and we know that there are at least four different genes that control uh, human skin color. Okay, um, the the reason that we can get more than uh, just four colors out of those four different genes is that we have something else that we're going on that we're going to talk about in just a minute, um, and that is multiple alleles. Okay, so. Um, that's it then for polygenic traits. Um, height is an example, skin color is an example, um, and both of those, the thing that we see is that they uh, result in a blending. Okay, another uh, way of blending alleles is, uh, or blending traits uh, is what we call multiple alleles. Okay. Um, in multiple alleles now, you have a fewer number of genes, but the, uh, there are different alleles, meaning there's different forms, different versions of the gene, okay? Um, so uh, again, it's not like there's just a simple blue-eyed gene and a brown-eyed gene, uh, and, and green or hazel. Um, there's a whole range of different colors, right? So um, that's caused by multiple alleles. There's not just one different or one or two different uh, eye color genes or one or two different eye color alleles. Um, there are many, 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 many alleles um, and at least, again, at least four different genes associated with eye color. The examples we're going to look at today uh, are going to be rabbit fur color um, and then tomorrow we'll look at another example which is the blood types. Okay, uh, multiple alleles in rabbits. I'm going to go through this kind of quickly. Um, the, there are actually four different alleles, um, and they look like this. Okay, the one that is dominant to all of these um, is the full color uh, allele, or full color uh, phenotype, I should say. The full color phenotype uh, is, a, is dominant. Okay, so it's one gene but there are four different alleles. Okay, so this is different from having um, two different genes, right, or four different genes. It's just one gene, but there's four different versions of that gene, four different alleles that cause that. Okay, so any of these genotypes, there's four different genotypes that will cause this phenotype. There's three different genotypes to cause the chinchilla phenotype. Okay. We designate the chinchilla with a lowercase c and a, a ch sub superscript. Then there's something called the Himalayan, um, and this is where we have um, mostly white, but then there's a few little black spots or black uh, areas on the body. And then the one that's totally albino, which is um, recessive to all the other forms, uh, which is uh, shown here on the lower right. This is just the cutest little bunny, isn't he, with those little tiny little short ears and little pink eyes. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's a that's a whole other story, and you can you can rewind it and look at that cute little bunny anytime you want. Okay, so four different alleles, four different genotypes. Okay, and there's the different uh, four different uh, alleles, four different phenotypes, I should say. Okay, so the patterns of inheritance that we've talked about today are right there, and we are just about out of time, so this is where I'm going to hold it up. And this has been Vodcast 21 for uh, Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. Hope you have a great day.